Coach from one of the loudest venues in the NFL. There's a look at Arrowhead Stadium here in Kansas City. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. With Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. LaShawn McCoy, the 31-year-old running back, his first carry. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. To throw is more. Off play action. He's got his man on the comebacker. That's Watkins. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. But there's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Hill complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20 yard line, just shy of the 20. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Nice methodical opening drive here. They're already in the field goal range. They're in a good spot. You know that people like to take a shot in this part of the field. But at the same time, as methodical as they've been, they might want to run the ball a little bit here, too. And just on the outskirts of the red zone, they have options now. Either way, though, they've come out with a purpose. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. After the penalty, it's McCoy. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. That's the way to hit. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Ready. Ready? Let's go one more. Tighty to the right, boy. Tighty to the right. Here's Moore looking to throw on second down. Complete the tight end, Kelsey. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Butker's kick here is good. And the Chiefs are out to a 3-0 lead. Butker, what a pickup he's been for Kansas City the last two years. Remember, he was drafted by Carolina to be the eventual successor to Graham Gano. That didn't pan out. Casey got him as a free agent. He's been really good. Yeah, Gano said, oh, no, I'm keeping my job. <laughs> but Butker found his home in Kansas City, a franchise record for points scored in his first two seasons.
After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Green Bay's offense getting the football back here. You know, we've talked in recent weeks of the favorable early season schedule for the Packers. The win over Oakland wrapped up a stretch of five out of six games at home, and indeed, the Packers won all five of those games. But now, Charles, the tough part of the schedule begins. Certainly does, right? For their next five on the road. Starts with this Sunday night, week eight. Kansas City, but they may have caught a break. Patrick Mahomes may not play for what KC, so we'll huh? see. Then they travel huh? to Carson, California to take on the struggling Chargers. May have caught a break with that one. Then they're back home for a game against the Panthers, and that will be tough because the Panthers' defense playing so well. And <laughs> who can tackle Christian McCaffrey? And then finally, two more road games. At San Francisco, who's playing as well as anyone in the league. And at the New York Giants, only one more home game between now and December 15th. And from the 25, they work this to the Defense. 29, a gain Defense. of four. Okay. Let's get but you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Now on third down, an extra DB out there for the Chiefs. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Got a man, that's Allison. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Rodgers to Allison, good for a Green Bay first down. When you give up points on the opening drive, in this case a field goal, you'd hate to go three and out. They avoid that. They do, and it's also walking that fine line mentally, too, as a coach, isn't it? Because you want to emphasize to your team exactly what you said. All right, we gave up a field goal. Let's go back and at least equal that, guys. But if we don't, you don't want them to feel like it's the end of the world either. Nice that they were able to pick up the first down there, help them relax a little bit. 13 yards, first down, Packers. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he'll take it across the 50 and into Chief territory. It's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Mike, number 53, Mike, 53. Let's go, D. They stay on the ground this time. It's Williams trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Throwing is Rodgers on third down. Open man is Allison complete. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs 36. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is started. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. And they're going to get about three here out of this first down run, and that'll bring up second and seven. Anthony Hitchens, second in the AFC in tackles last year, there to bring him down. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Now Williams, down to the 30 after a gain of three. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. From the gun, it's Rodgers. Oh, he almost picked it. Nearly a turnover there on their opening drive. And that's a throw he'd like to have back. Now fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, 
They remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Gardner, I think they saw something there. I mean, they came from the right side deliberately, and you know there's always a designated guy who goes and blocks it, but it's the rest of his teammates that get him free. A bit of an opening there on the first down run as they get this forward for about six yards. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Well, with Damian Williams, it's notable that the Chiefs didn't make a play to go after a big-time running back in the offseason. The coaching staff said back in May they didn't want running back by committee. They trusted Williams to be their starter. You remember last year, he was forced into the starting role the final three games of the season due to attrition, and he really excelled. And then he was excellent in the playoffs against the Colts and Patriots. Strong indicator that he was ready to be the bell cow. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. From the gun on third down, Moore. And this is caught by Watkins. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Chiefs first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Travis Kelsey, the all-pro tight end, the intended receiver, but it'll be second down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. He'll turn and give this to McCoy running right. And that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. It's a loss of two. Now third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Five. To throw on third down, more. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's gonna bring up fourth down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through, and that'll make it 6-0 here in the first. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right, baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. The last time they had a little bit of a special teams breakdown, that field goal was blocked. Yeah, and everything has to be precise in the kicking game. Snap, hold, kick, obviously the blocking to keep people out. So what you really want to do is get in there and get six points and take the pressure off of those guys. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Tackle made there by Frank Clark. 
And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. On the tackle, Tyron Matthew. And when the defense wins and gives up no yardage on a running play, that's something they can build on and carry themselves forward throughout the game. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and ten. Shotgun now for Rodgers. He's going to air one out. And got his man complete. And they're going to have this across midfield go, and go, inside the 45. The previous play, they barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Now they pick up over 30 yards. Six nothing, our score after one. The Packers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and ten. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Rodgers gives this to Jamal Williams. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Six man. Rodgers throwing quickly out to Adams. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. Into the red zone. It's Rodgers. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Jimmy Graham, the intended receiver. And it's second down. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Rodgers now to throw again. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions. Have a look at it third and 10. Now Rodgers. He'll get this off to Jamal Williams. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. An eight-yard touchdown run. As his guys can now take the lead with the extra point. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Crosby with the extra point, and they take the lead here at 7-6. to six.
Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Chiefs offense takes the field again here, and let's look at what happened week seven. They beat up on Denver 30-6, to and the Chiefs needed that after home losses to Indy and Houston. Now, the big story, of course, Patrick Mahomes dislocated Patella. That was the quarterback sneak play that everybody was talking about. And a, a Hold on a second. What is a dislocated Patella so, for us who yeah. don't understand, who don't speak medical? I was just going to get there, okay. Mr. Davis. It's a dislocated kneecap. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, but okay. it seems like they might get him back sooner than they originally thought. Yeah, originally, as you you know, the word was, what, three to six weeks? Yeah. Now we're hearing reports that it may be on the low side of that, maybe three weeks. And if that's the case, he could be back for the Minnesota game after missing the Green Bay game on Sunday night. And the key for him and why he could be back sooner, no ligament damage, a big sigh of relief. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in. Your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly. This is brought in at the 21. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. A throw left side to start the drive is complete. That throw good for four. It's second down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. They'll run out of the gun here. Williams. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 yards there and a first down. Partner, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. Number 53, Mike 53. It's just me and you. It's just me and you. On first and with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Joshua Jackson there to knock that one away. They went with the dime look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And the kick by Butker is good. And they jump back in front here. It's 9-7. to seven. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, he's still been able to come away with points due to his leg. After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. This fielded at the two. 
And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they were hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second and nine, Rodgers got an open man. It's Valdez Scantling. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before we being corralled. This. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Rodgers now on first down. And that's complete to Adams. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Six yards was the pickup on the last complete. So here's second and four. To throw, it's Rogers. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Rodgers now 12 of 16 thus far. It's first and 10. Rodgers again now. He goes right back to Adams. That's complete. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On second down now, it's Williams, and he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Seven yards there and a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. We won't come to my world. Check 50, check 50. We play to win. Let go. Da -da -da. 58. Check 53 is mine. They'll run it with Williams. They'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And all the way down to the 17-yard line. It's a gain of 16 and a first down for the green and gold. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. Off the draw, here's Williams. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Yeah. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now they'll throw with Rodgers. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Adams. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Working from the gun, Rodgers to the goal line, but it's incomplete. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. 
You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And they take the lead here by a point, 10-9. So this time, the protection holds up for him just fine, and he's able to bang it through. I think their special teams coach got the point across. He gave him a pretty good earful after the block earlier, and this time, there's no penetration, so they're able to pick up three. After the main field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Chiefs offense now making their way back onto the field. Under a minute to play here in the half. Time for a late drive. It makes sense when you think about it. Hey, try and get a field goal. Give yourself a lead going into the half. But if you're going to do this, you better have supreme trust in your quarterback. Supreme trust in the guy who's going to handle the football. Because if you turn it over here, not only do you go in down at the half, you've given the momentum squarely to your opponent. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they march off another 15 against your squad. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. Now more operating from the gun. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Damian Williams, the man he was looking for. And now it's second down. Okay, partner, let's mix things up a bit. This is something that's been a staple of morning television programs for a long time. Let's bring it to Madden. Some power rankings. Give me your top five through seven weeks. All right, I'll start with number five, and that's the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson, he can throw it as well as run it, but his running, that's so exciting. Number four, the Green Bay Packers. Looks like Aaron Rodgers and his head coach, Matt LaFleur. Looks like they're in sync, and the Packers are playing awfully well right now. Number three, San Francisco. Their defense, built to travel. They can play anywhere and take on anyone, and they run the ball on offense. Number two, New Orleans. They've survived without Drew Brees. In fact, they flourished with Teddy Bridgewater, and their defense, vastly underrated, one of the top three in the league. And last but not least, shocker, New England. And I did think about putting New Orleans ahead of New England, but New England's defense is the best in the league. And Tom Brady on the other side, they still reign supreme. It's Kelsey on the ground. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Moore now, 9 of 16 through the air as he's got it first and 10. To throw is Moore. From the gun, he'll throw. And his throw is incomplete. Sammy Watkins, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. Ready, ready. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Now more. This is caught by Robinson. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter.
They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Mike 50, Mike 50. He's good. He's good. More now. This is caught by Hill for a Chiefs touchdown. Tyreek Hill as the first half is winding down. And the Chiefs are going to jump back in front. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Are you looking forward? Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. The extra point splits the uprights, and that'll make this a six-point game. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. This will be taken about the 12. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one, go to the locker room, start over. And throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Ball on the 30 as they come up, second and 10. to throw again. Rodgers. Well, this is caught by Williams. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. A final shot before half for Rodgers. And able to find Graham, complain. And he'll be stopped right oh, at midfield. So we have let's reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, ready for the start of the third quarter. The Chiefs have the lead and set to receive the football. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose, and boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Rodgers going to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Adams. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a first down on a gain of 10. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And they'll get this just to the 47, one yard gain. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. 
What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. On second and nine, Rodgers incomplete, almost intercepted. They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's and obviously gotten smart and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Setting up the screen here, Aaron Jones. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Call it a loss of six on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And this one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. Come on, fellas. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that, hasn't it? Seems he? like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop no him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Carry over from the first half. That defensive line continues to control the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're actually playing the game in the offense's backfield. They're taking those offensive linemen and pushing them back towards the quarterback and towards the runners. I still don't think, though, that you abandon the running game totally, because if you do, you're asking for a lot more hits on your QB. And he gets it to the 30 when it's all said and done. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. That was an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big time completion. Back to throw. Moore. Complete. The tight end, Kelsey. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. That first down completion only netted him three, second and seven. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Blake Martinez, the NFC's leading tackler a year ago, in on the stop. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. They complete it to Hill, and he will have a first down here at about the 40. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. Moore on first and 10. To the right side, it's Kelsey. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. And yeah, never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good. And now the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Dean Lowry credit him with a sack as he buries him for a loss of 10. But nothing takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum Whoa. shifted to the other side of the football. 70. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Here's Moore throwing on third and long. The tight end, Kelsey, has it over the middle. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? 
Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Here's Dustin Colquitt now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is taken at the 18. Just a net of 34 there, following a punt of 44 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now a play fake, Rodgers. Got a man, that's Allison. And he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage with a penalty flag down. This might push him back further. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Here's Rodgers. To Valdez Scantling over the middle. The reception good for seven. It's third down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And he'll be taken down, but Let's not go. before Let's they go. work Let's it go. across midfield. A big third down pickup of 20 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up the first down. In on the tackle, Alex Okafor. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Looking to throw on second down. Rodgers, it's caught here by Adams. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Third and five, so they bring in an extra defensive back. An expecting pass. From the gun, it's Rodgers. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Down here in the third quarter, obviously that's one they could have used. Yeah, and one of my favorite special teams coaches in the NFL told me what separates the kickers in the NFL versus the ones who are not is not the misses. It's the second miss in a row. Best kickers in the league, they don't miss two in a row. He's got to get his head back together in case he gets another shot. On first and 10, Moore, short throw, hauled in by Kelsey. A gain of six there on first. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. 
On the ground, this is Williams. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Oh, yeah! The tackle made by Blake Martinez. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Ready? 42, Mike's 42. Hey, let's get him in hard. Deep rip, deep rip. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. Yeah, Williams is going to be stopped short of the yellow line. He did not get yeah, there. Baby. No gain yeah. on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Here's Dustin Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Kansas City. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. Throwing now is Rodgers. That's complete to Williams out of the backfield. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. We're back now in KC. It's the Packers who have the football, but in need of points as we begin quarter number four. Aaron Rodgers, three fourth quarter comebacks last year. That's the most he's had in one season in his entire career. And he's going to need another one right now. To throw again on second down, Rodgers. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Darren Lee drops him for a loss of 10, and it's going to be fourth and long. And, Charles, they only needed a yard there. They try to pass the football. What do you think? Well, I can't really go all out and kill them for the call because that third and one fake and throw it over the top for a big play, that often does work. But in this situation, the pressure got to him. So possession goes over here on the punt, and it's Chiefs football, first and ten. And now here comes Kansas City, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Zadaria Smith able to get him down. But well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. 50 plant. Keep tight end. Keep tight end. We got it. More now to throw on second down. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. An 11 yard pickup, and it's enough for a Chiefs first down. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you got to know the situation. Oh, stay in bounds, young man. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Looking to throw. More. It's Hill. Complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A really good pickup of 28 yards. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Adrian Amos up to make the tackle. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, 
gain some yardage and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Packer pressure, and down he goes. Montrevious Adams. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going Let's to go. protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Down. After the delay, 64. they're backed up even further you for third and long. You better be afraid of me. Get it. Now more operating from the gun. And this is going to be incomplete. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. <laughs> footwork, that led to the incompletion. And Butker able to put this one through. And that will make this a nine-point lead. A big one there. That gives him a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, bled a little time off the clock, put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet, but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender, you go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us. After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Let's go, baby. And Green Let's Bay go. getting ready to go as they take the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Rodgers now on first down. Jones has it. Give him three on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. That first down completion only netted them three. Second and seven. Throwing is Rodgers. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold out of that one, and it's third down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. To throw is Rodgers. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Eight yards, first down as they're able to convert. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Adams hauling it in from Rodgers. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Looking to throw again on second down. Rodgers in a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by 
Rashad Breeland. And they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. To throw is Moore. Throwing to start the drive. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Moore throwing again. Got his man, it's Williams. They'll get five on the dump off there and that'll lead to a third down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they Eight consider feet. safe. The Chiefs on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This will be third and five. And Robinson with a big catch. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. That goes for a Chiefs first down, 14 yards. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. You, you, clock you, on their you, side. You, you. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It'll go as a gain of 10 and a Kansas City first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation when they absolutely need the football on, back. That's seven, either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. That throw good for four. It's second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. And this Green Bay defense making that play look a lot like the previous one. Both tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Here's Moore on third down. It's complete to Williams. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. A short game that doesn't get him the first down. Brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. Butker's kick here is good. And that will give him a 12-point lead. So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often, but you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, here and it here comes out to the 25-yard line. The Packers offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see we how they this. attack them here. 11 yards and a Green Bay Packer first down. 
At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Now it's Rodgers. Got an open man. It's Valdez Scantling. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Those short little routes probably going to be open. The defense, they'll let those happen, especially when they can make an inbounds tackle. Yeah, where's Coach Madden when you need him? He always talked about taking what the defense gives you, but sometimes you have to know when you have to take more. That was one of those situations. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. To throw, it's Rodgers. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Williams. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. The last run got six, now second and four. Hey, D-line, let's get in there. Let's get in there now. Check. Here's Rodgers to throw. And he finds his tight end, Graham. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. And Rodgers is going to go down. He's sacked. The Mississippi State man Chris Jones with a sack there exactly what they were looking for. They've been giving up yardage. They've been letting them drive right downfield, but they got a sack right there. How about that for a little bit of revenge? Rodgers in control as he hurries his guys to the line to try again after the sack. Rodgers. A throw caught by Kumaro. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And able to find Graham, complete. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs' 15-yard line. When we see another great performance like this out of Aaron Rodgers, you have to chuckle thinking that his only FBS offer was a walk-on at Illinois. And now he's the pride of Butte Junior College, of course at Cal. And I remember watching him play at Cal and he would run seven-on-seven -seven drills. Angry if the ball ever hit the ground and he didn't do it very often. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Rodgers going to throw again. This will be caught just inside the ten. And now they're inside the ten as he's brought down at the nine. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try and find the open spot and sit down. Yeah, we always talk about finding the soft spot in the zone. What's the key to doing that? How do you do it? You have to read what the coverage is. Is it too deep? Is it three deep? Because then you know where the linebackers are going to drop, what spots on the field they naturally get to, and you find that open space, and then you're in sync with your quarterback. He should be reading the exact same thing, and they put the ball right on you. 
And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. One final try for Rodgers. We've seen this before. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. So this one in the win column for Kansas City. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no point points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Chiefs victorious here as we say so long from Arrowhead.